Live, yes, yes. I think we're live. Yep, there we go. Good to go. Cool. Hello, everyone. Uh, paint by Nate here. We're going to be doing another live stream, just some paint alongs. Uh, first episode I'm going to be doing here is uh, Bob Ross season 24 now, episode 8. It is the backcountry path episode. So it's a the background so far is just liquid liquid gray so it's half ivory black half uh, liquid white and then this top part here i just use liquid clear and clear and blended out the uh around the edges we're we're just trying to get everything loaded up here once that's done looks like youtube is spinning if you're on YouTube and it's not working, let me know. I think it's loaded, but it's hard to tell. All right. Uh, palette here. We've got titanium white, uh, alizarin crimson. This is uh, ultramarine. I ran out of phthalo blue, so I gotta <laughs> gotta make do. Prussian blue, ivory black, sap green, uh, cadmium yellow light, and this is actually Hansa yellow. Uh, that's the pigment, and then yellow. Ochre and cadmium red light, but this is naphthol red. They just change the names, same thing. All right. So with that, I'm going to unpause Bob here, and we're just going to get started. You know, most of this is just this very thin gray color. And I'll just finish doing that here real quick. And then it was just sort of scrubbed in. I'm a little bit ahead, and I didn't have any of the... Uh, I'm out of black gesso too, so the, these trees here or shapes here should be black gesso as well. If you have black gesso, that's good. If you don't, you don't you don't need it to paint along with Bob. You can, like I've been doing, just make do with what you got. And it looks like we're gonna have a tree here, a big tree over here, path in the middle, and then some. I think there's some stones here. I didn't actually wash this brush after I used it, so I'm going to do that. And I just use, uh, I'm using water mixable oils. I think everyone who's tuned in knows that. Or at least tuned in before, if you haven't. That's uh, what I normally use. Just use uh, Lucas Berlin's, Grumbachers, Max, uh, all kinds of different ones. Oh, looks like there's white all over this. That's another thing. I always forget to clean the handle of my palette knife, so I get titanium white all over it usually. All right, that's clean. A lizard and crimson. Just a little bit. It looks like he's putting it in between where the trees go, and we're just gonna have to wing it here because we don't have those dark trees. Sunset, I don't know. Whatever we're going for. Oh, he's using some sap green. I almost called it crap green. That's no good. <laughs> Alright, there we go. And this up here again is just liquid. Not the uh, liquid gray that I mixed. Hello. Hi, Hamlet. Hamletty. How are you doing? Gonna throw some more lizard and crimson over here on the side. And this lizard and crimson is actually Windsor and Newton. I don't have the uh, any more of the Lucas Berlin crimson left, so I'm on my last tube of it. Uh, titanium white here on the dirty brush. And we're gonna throw it in here. It looked like a glow. Interesting. I don't know what that looks like. I can't really see the difference here. Maybe a little more white. Lighten it up some more. Uh, 
might be a little different if I had the, uh, what was it? Black gesso in the background. But I'm out of black gesso, so I can't paint the background. I guess he's going over here on the left. I'm just throwing color in, basically background colors, nothing, nothing too exciting here. Maybe some more white here, it looks like. Ooh, there we go. That's what I needed. Now I can actually see it. When I have these light tones, I can't, I have trouble seeing the colors. Like all of this right now looks the same except for this spot here, at least to me. You are amazing. Thank you. You can be amazing at painting as well. Unless you already are, you might be. I don't, it's the first time in the chat. If you painted before, let me know. I'm always interested. See what techniques people use. I'm still learning myself. All right, and I'm using a Trilon. This uh, just two inch brush I get at the uh, hardware store. All right, we're gonna mix up crimson, blue, Prussian blue. This should turn purple. To me, this looks blue, but to normal, normal people, this should be purple. Maybe some more crimson. There we go. Yep, I think that's right. I'm gonna take that two-inch brush again, tap the corner, like you're knocking on a door. And it should be a little uh, fanned out. here. And the same motion that we used on the palette is what we're using up here. If I was using, I use drumming terms. This is like a mezzo forte. I'm just putting in some background trees here. All right, good night. Thanks for tuning in though. That is very late. I'm just gonna tap in some more. I don't wanna go all into this white because if you go into this white color, we'll pick it up and it'll make this lighter, which is not what we want. And this is all background again. We just, no sense overthinking what's going on in the background because it all gets covered up. And I think here Bob's using, he's using the half inch round. And I do have one, or I, yeah, I do have a half inch round over there, but I don't use those anymore. I just use the simple hardware brushes and Bill Alexander brushes. All right, we're gonna use script liner. Same color, this is just linseed oil. Some people use liquid clear, which has uh, linseed oil, and some additives in it, but I just use linseed oil. Go back and forth. And we're gonna add in some trunks. And for that, it doesn't have to be exact, you just up and down, here and there. You might not even be able to see these. That's okay. As long as it's there, somewhere in the background. You can always blend them out if you don't like them too. Like I don't like that one over there, it's too dark. So it's, it's very easy to get rid of. Just tap it out, let's see. Now it's gone. All right, we need cadmium yellow and black. Now I'll make a dark green, very dark green color. There we go, look at that. And then this is Hansa yellow. So we'll need actually a lot more Hansa yellow. I shouldn't have used that much black when I was mixing with Hansa yellow because it's very weak. See how it almost immediately turns dark green. 
That's just part of the paint. I'm just adding in some, some green flavors here and there. I don't know why I have this side lighter. I just, I don't know, felt like making it lighter. So we got dark trees over there and light trees over there. Maybe we'll go up into it a little bit. There we go. All right, he's doing, what is he doing? Sap green, the lizard and crimson in equal parts. And this is a little tricky because I have two different types of paint here. One's a lot thicker than the other, but it should come out okay. And this should make a nice brown. There we go. Tiny roll. So you go start at the top left, go down to the right. And then, what are we doing here? Oh, we're adding in a little bank here. Just something like that. I'm just taking this and, like Bob said, just mashing the knife into the fabric. I do little circles too that gets it into these little weaves. Otherwise you end up with little holes everywhere. Holes of non-colored parts of your canvas. Eh, that's not very, you don't want that usually. Sometimes you do. Depends on what you like. Everybody has their own preference. I'm going to take some of this, just titanium white, and throw it in with this grayish is that red i can't tell i have no idea and then you just lightly tap it and pull down it actually looks more pink than anything else is that pink i can't tell i have no idea like i said once i get into these darker colors i have no idea what this looks like or lighter colors tones hues they all blend together for me. Alright, set the knife down, get this green color again. Alright, what is he doing here? Oh, he's putting some little bushes up top. I'm gonna put some down there. And pushing in this time. If you push in, that'll make it a uh, look like grass because not all of the br bristles are the same size so some of them will go in pretty far the other ones will stick up I'm just going to tap it out over here there we go now we're going to add in another little stone here the same little roll of paint that's okay if you have other paint on there Probably does matter, but to me it don't matter. There we go. And I'm just I just kind of shake the knife back and forth, and again go down to the right, and it comes out to a nice color eventually. And I'm just pulling lightly on this, I guess, rock boulder. We got a lot of these where I live. Oh, I'm going to clean the knife first because I don't want this light color in there when I'm making a pass. At least the first pass through. Alright. Use that brown. Lots of it this time because it looks like we're making a, a big old path here. So we're going to start up here. And I'm just pulling to the left. And then shake it back and forth. That'll blend it out a little bit. Grab some more. Throw this down here. Let me scrape some in over there. It doesn't have to be solid here because it'll look like uh, it'll look like it's highlighted. And we're gonna cover up most of it anyway. There we go. The knife off, get it nice and clean, and we'll go back into this green brush. Uh, use that purple that I had up here before. And this is all the same 
Same brush, I ain't, I ain't even cleaned it yet. I'm gonna throw in some more of this. I might add some black to this to make it a little darker. Black, maybe some blue. knocking again Just nothing nothing crazy here make all this kind of dark might need to subtract some paint here in a minute but for now I think it's okay I might push this up oh there we go that's what I wanted and you push it up, it makes really leafy trees. If it's flat, it makes grass. If it's vertical, it makes trees. It just depends on what you're doing or what you want the desired effect to be. Take some white here. And then we just got to highlight our little path here. And I'm just starting on the right now. So we start on the right. You get a, a layer of paint on the right side, and then you can just come back and pull it, and it'll go across. Kind of fade out a bit as you go down. And on this side, I'm going to go on the left. There we go. And it looks kind of like rocks, I guess. Something, something in here. And if you don't like part of it, again, you can just cover everything up. It's whatever you want to do. Just getting more dark colors in here. This one might be too dark. There we go. I need some more black, some more blue. A little both. And this side, I might just, I'm going to throw in just a bunch of paint here. I want this to be all dark anyways. I shouldn't have covered it with the white if I wanted it to be dark, but I didn't know what I was doing beforehand. I don't really know half the time anyway. There we go. Alright, so now we got the dark color in. We gotta give it some texture, so I'm just gonna tap. I'm gonna tap across. This is the door knocking, but left to right, and that gives it the illusion that it looks like grass. There we go. I should do it on the other side as well. Let's do that. Down at the bottom. Oh, Camus is moving here. Easy fix. Just pull it out a little bit more. And we'll go, I might clean the brush now. Now that I've got all my dark colors in there, we got to lighten them up a bit. All right, rinse this out. All right, and then push this down in there at the bottom. Shake it out. There we go. Nice and clean. I'm just using a paper towel here, wiping out the water, excess water that I got in there. There we go. Uh, all right, let's go back in this yellow. I'm gonna tap here. Just tap again, tapping down to the left. This is just to add some variation in colors on it. Maybe it looks a little like grass. And then it looks like Bob took the rest of his paint and he went the complete opposite way. And that's okay. We can we can just move this around. It's easy to move paint too. I'm probably looking at this like that's disgusting. That looks terrible. Maybe it is. Again, I can't see half the colors on here anyway, so 
but it's about the process, at least for me. And we're just pulling to the left here. I'm going to try a blend here in the middle where these two paths come together. Just pulling her from right to left again. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. That makes it look like it's coming more out of the canvas, I think. I'll go back up here. I missed some highlights that Bob did, so I'm going to use that dark green. This color. I'm doing pretty much the whole painting here with a two inch brush. But we're just going to highlight some things here. This one's a little bigger. And then I'll add some more yellow here. I'll tap this in. I'm just adding in grass. Left, right, left, right. Bob's talking about Peapod, the pocket squirrel again. He always talks about him in these later seasons. Really, really likes Peapod. I was blending out stuff where I had globs of that yellow paint. There we go. I'm going to use this yellow ochre. I haven't used that yet. Oh, it looks like I missed another boulder. That's okay. We can add one in. This one up here. There we go. And wipe the knife off in between. And just pull down. Makes it look like a stone. There we go. And then what do we do now? He's adding another one. Lots of boulders in this one. Lots and lots of boulders. <laughs> I'm just going to use the rest of this paint that I had mixed up and not used. No sense wasting good paint. Pull it down all the way. I'll yeah, we'll put one down here too. giant rock here. Now we'll take, oh, should we highlight it first? Yeah, might as well. Kind of don't even want to highlight these. So once, once you highlight them, they get, they get kind of thick, like the paint on them is real thick and it's hard to, it's hard to add colors to them. At least for me, maybe not for you. I don't know what, what your situations are, but for me at least it's kind of difficult. Just adding textures to those rocks there. Take that two inch brush again. Up here, gonna tap up. Up and to the left. And this one I'm gonna go up, up and around. I think it looks like these are under the ground kinda. Something like that. Maybe we'll add some more here. Up here. There we go. We're going to add, looks like another tree up here on the left. I'm going to use my actual two and a half inch Alexander brush here for this. We're going straight into the black and maybe some ultramarine. And this is a big tree. The same knocking motion. Nothing, nothing different there. Another problem with these types of these black canvas paintings for me, not only can I not see them, but when I take pictures of them, it's hard for me to position the camera against the glare. There's a pretty bad glare on it. So 
far does this one go down? It looks like it goes down here, maybe. I might need some black paint here. I'm, I'm in the mud mixing zone. That's never good. All right, I'm gonna throw some white in there, some yellow. I think like a dull gray or a dull green. Is a nasty one. That's okay. Can always do another painting. There's always more. Yeah, this is all mud down here. So I put too much liquid gray on and then added some nasty colors on top didn't think about what I was doing, but it happens sometimes. You get carried away. You can also always take away paint. Like, I know I didn't. I just kept going with it, but like, this part down here. I guess I can show you because this paint's pretty much toast anyway. You just take a shop towel, rip up all that nasty oil and paint that you put down. And a lot of the dark color will still be on there, but some of it won't be. And all, most importantly, all the oil will be gone. You don't want the oil in there if you're going to go back over it. So, now that we've done that, I'm going to get yellow again. More yellow. Hopefully we don't end up with the nasty gray color here. Since it's been thoroughly ruined. I wouldn't say it's ruined either. Sometimes I exaggerate a little bit. Uh, what's it called? Hyperbole. There we go. And then we'll just take this green color. Now that we've removed all the nasty paint, we can add in some green. That looks way better. Look at that. If I was using my regular cadmium paints, I wouldn't have any problems here. I'm just tapping down again. I think I did most of this. I did the entire painting here with the two inch brushes. That's interesting. All right, so now we got a little hill here. What do we want to add a, I don't even know. I'm just gonna take this yellow, some white, make like an orangey color. I don't know, is that orange? I can't tell, no idea. I'm just gonna add in some little bushes here, some little shrubs. like grass. Maybe at the bottom of that uh, this guy. Yeah, there we go. Down here. Just blend out the bottoms. Blend them out. I just take the, the corner of this brush and just kind of tap it a little bit. That blends out. Blends out the bottom. There we go. I can't even see what colors are up here anymore. Maybe one bush down there for good measure. Tie the tie the picture together <laughs> all right that one's done or I'm gonna call it done because I'm kind of tired of it I really don't enjoy doing the black canvases I don't know if I'd said that but they're good for some people but if you have trouble seeing colors it doesn't it really works out and it usually ends up you get really frustrated with them here check it out in the trash can or the bin as they say wipe it on a paper towel and these are the alexander brushes i think i did a, a video about them a few a few weeks ago just the brushes that i use this is alexander two and a half inch magic brush he calls it oh and one, one thing i did want to mention if you're doing if you're painting with water mixable oils and you want to do multiple paintings, uh, make sure you clean the paint out before you wash it in water. Then you can do more paintings. Otherwise, your water gets dirty and you have to go refill it, dispose of the 
the waste and that takes a while. If you do it this way, you don't have to clean the water more than once. And if you're doing like the Alexander style, I haven't taken their class yet, but they said you can do multiple paintings just using paper towels to clean the brushes. And I think that'd be pretty nice. I haven't signed up for it yet, I don't know. I don't know if I will or not, but it'd be fun to learn how to actually paint from folks over there at Alexander Art. All right, what do we need to do here? I clean off the only two brushes I used. I guess I used this one. We gotta sign it. We always gotta sign it. What are you doing? Here we go. Script liner in cadmium red. I take the oil, thin oil, linseed oil, and just shake it back and forth, left, right, blah, 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 like that. Uh, and the hardest part is, where do we want to sign it? I don't want to sign it over here because that's where it looks the worst. NWJ, there we go. And then we got to put the date on here, 22. Some people put the full date. I think that's pretty cool, but I like putting the year right under the J. Wipe that out. And I got to pick a second painting to do. I already primed a white canvas with magic white or liquid white, whatever you want to call it, whatever people call these. But I'll get take this one down, pull it up to the screen, see how it looks. Oh, how do we do? How do we do? Is that better than last time? Maybe not. A little bit. Path came out really nice. It looks so much different on the camera. I think the pixel, the phones do something with the image. Makes it look better for people who are colorblind. But maybe I'm just being silly. All right. We got to clean off the uh, easel here, clean off the palette. If you're joining me today, Got a few people on YouTube there. Nice to see. Much appreciated. I don't think it tells me who's on uh, Twitter, but you know, some people watch on Twitter. They DM me and say they enjoy it. All right, I'm just wiping off the paint from the uh, that gets on the easel, so it doesn't get in the next painting. I'll go grab this other canvas here that I've already primed. It's nice, uh, nice sheen, nice white sheen here. Throw that up. We've got some on me. Got a bunch of stuff over on this panel over here. I don't know what's going on. Uh oh. All right, we fixed it. Cool. We got to figure out what we want to paint next. Nobody said anything in the chat what we want to paint. I might just do. I think Bill Alexander's, they did a, uh, they released a new video yesterday, I think. I'll go check that out. Actually, yeah, we can do that up here. We'll go to here, go back, alexanderart.com. Whoops. Oh, I closed the wrong thing. It happens sometimes. There we go. Alexander Art. Check your encoder settings. Recommended 1.42. I don't know what that was. Hopefully it's not busted. Sometimes Restream has all kinds of issues. It just just blows up in my face, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna clean up the palette real quick while we try to figure out what we want to paint next. And again, if anybody has any suggestions, just let me know in the in the chat what you want to see painted and I'll give it a shot hopefully it's not like that last one that one didn't come out so good sometimes they don't sometimes they do I still need to make a uh, clean up in between painting either a slide or like a transition or something just so so there's not this awkward thing where it's just me on the 
out of frame talking over while you guys are just sitting there. Because that's not entertainment. Nobody finds that entertaining. I mean, maybe you do. I don't know. I don't know. Alright, clean that off. And I always recommend wiping your palette off after you paint. Otherwise, you get... Um, it'll dry. And over time, it, it can crack your, crack your palette. If you're using a wood one, if you're using a plastic one, it's okay. You can it just gets kind of annoying because you can't scrape it off, but it's not the worst thing in the world. All right, palette's cleaned. We're up here on YouTube. It says I'm live. Oh, I'm live. Oh, thanks YouTube. I knew I was live. That doesn't not important. <laughs> Channels, Bill Alexander, Alexander Art, and then what's this one he did? Oh, Mountain River. Oh, this one's wonderful. I'm going to do this one. I don't know what colors he used, though. Oh, ads. The worst. All right. I think, I hope this is one where he just uses yellow, red, and blue. What a joy to be out here. The sun is shining, birds are singing. If you watch the Bill Alexander documentary, they show his house and he did like a hatchery for salmon, just like a bunch of chickens. Yeah, it looks like he's just doing yellow, red, and blue again. Let's see, titanium white. Oh, he's got more than that. He's got more than that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look up this episode real quick. What is this called? Mountain River by Bill Alexander. Mountain River. I usually have it in the uh, in the paint on their website. If you go to alexanderart.com, they have DVDs or downloads of all these. Yep. And they say the paint's in the bottom. So, titanium white, red, yellow, brown, sap green, Prussian blue, crimson, phthalo green, phthalo blue. Ooh, that's quite the palette. But we should have all those colors. Bill always used the sap green or the phthalo green a lot. That was something most people don't use too much. But I use, um, when I'm using regular oil paints, I use... Emerald green from Blue Ridge Oil Paints. It's a phthalo green, but to the red shade, or the yellow shade, I think. Looks very nice on trees. They don't have a sap green, so that's why I have to use it, but it looks nice. I always like it. All right, we got titanium white, sap green. What else do we need here? Permanent red, cadmium yellow. Can't wait when I'm to be done with these uh, Lucas Berlin oil paints. They were they were a poor choice on my part. I shouldn't have bought. I should have just bought the small tubes, but uh, I went and they were on sale, and I bought all the giant tubes of them. So now I got to use them up because I don't try to I don't try to waste paint. No sense in doing that. All right, we need the red, bright red here. All right, red, yellow. Brown, green, Prussian blue. Ah, Prussian blue. That's a bigger tube that I got. And I'm out of phthalo blue. I don't know if people heard me mention that. I'm using ultramarine, which is also, I'm pretty sure that's blue. Uh, no black here. No black. No, uh, no ivory black. No midnight black. Prussian blue. Got, got that. Oh, it just got paint all over the floor. Oh, jeez. That's no good. I'll clean it out later, I guess. It happens. <laughs> All right. So we got Thalo Blue, Prussian Blue. We need... What color am I missing? Ah, Lizard Crimson. That's the color. And then... Is there yellow ochre in this one? It does not look like it, but I'm going to put out yellow ochre anyways because I actually really like yellow ochre. 
It's one of my favorite pigments of any brand of paint. It's yellow ochre. It's just very strong, nice golden yellow. No matter what paint you get, it's usually the one of the stronger pigments. Nice opaque. Blue, blue, phthalo green, sap green. Is that Van Dyke brown? Yes, Van Dyke brown, yellow, yellow, red. Okay. I believe my palette's ready. My easel is ready. Are you ready? Are you ready to paint? If you, if you do paint, let me know. All right, let's unpause. Bah, Bill Alexander. All right, again, if you're just tuning in, as I see we have three new viewers there. Titanium White, Ultramarine, Prussian Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Phthalo Green, Sap Green, Brandeis Brown, Cadmium Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Cadmium Red Light. And the canvas already has a mixture that I made myself of half lean seed oil, half titanium white. It's all water mixable oils. And let's see. I think we're going to use the two inch brush here to start. Bill never calls out the color he's using. I think he's using one of the blues, which is probably the lighter one. So I'm going to start with that. Bill is extremely fast if you paint with him, so you gotta be, you gotta be on your toes. I'm just doing a little X strokes here. Oh geez, he's already at the bottom. But he has to clean his brush, I don't, so I can catch up. Maybe get some more blue up here. Too much magic white on here. It's hard for me to tell. Oh my goodness, he already did the water. <laughs> oh, that's why one of the things I like painting more with Bill Alexander than than Bob Ross is that Bill is just you you can tell he's strapped for time. Like he's very on under time crunch when he's painting. So he just lets loose. And you can look at the painting and have an entire thing already done. Well, oh, I'm still up here just painting water. And here I'm just pulling right to left to make it look like there's a sheen in the middle. I think Bill, yeah, he does it He does it differently every time. So sometimes he'll go top down, he'll pull straight down, and then go at an angle so it looks like it's going straight into the middle. And then other times he'll just, like he does in this episode, and he just painted the entire thing blue, which I might, I'm gonna do that. To do that, you just keep going back and forth over it, and that'll get rid of the, most of the sheen you put in. I'll go back up here. I feel like there's not enough blue. All right, got some blue up there, some blue over there. Some in the middle, some on the right. We can cover all of this up later. Be so perfectly fine. Unpause. Bill. He's throwing in some nice happy clouds. All right, he's using the fan brush. So I'll grab my number six fan brush here. Titanium white. Shake it back and forth. Get a bunch of paint in there. And then fire it in. Don't think about it, just go crazy. We'll do the same over here. Just random. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna wipe this off and then get my two inch brush. And he says hypnotize it. And to hypnotize, I just blend out the bottoms. Sometimes I blend out the tops too, but it's up to you.
hypnotize. See, and the button was the cloud. There we go. Look at that. Ooh. Nice little clouds just hanging out up there. Isn't that nice? Oh, that's good. Clouds are my favorite thing to paint because I can actually see them. <laughs> Unless they're very light. But usually it's a very strong blue and a opaque white and I can see it just fine. Alright. We got some more white here. Oh. Put some white down here. Van Dyke Brown. Prussian Blue. Crimson. A little bit more white. <laughs> I'll just say it looks so nice you can eat it. Don't eat the paint. If you're watching, don't eat the paint. Not good. Alright, I just mixed the paint. So it's a little marbled so you can see streaks of white in it. And I'm going to go start on the top left and move down to the right, get a little thin roll of paint. I'm going to throw them out over here. Up, and then maybe a little bit down. Maybe a little bump here. just take the paint and push it in really hard in, into the canvas because that gets it into the into the weeds of the canvas makes it hard to get rid of the color you put on there we go and we're going to go back to this two and a half inch brush i'm just going to tap Tapping up and down the shape of the mountain. Warm that up just a little bit. There we go. All right. We'll go back here. Take the knife. Clean it off. White and a touch of red. Very small. Yeah, that's too much. Looks okay, I think. All right, I'm gonna throw some highlights on here, I believe. Left side or right side? Mm. Oh, he's doing the left. It looks like. Yep. Oh no. My computer just freaked out a little bit there. We're just going to highlight this. And to highlight, you just take the knife, pull down. I already pulled off so much of it that it doesn't blend in very well, which is nice. You really don't want this to blend. Or maybe you do. Up to you. There we go. I think most of this gets covered up, so we don't have to worry too much about it. All right, take this ultramarine color. Some white. A little bit more white. Uh, there we go. There. And these are our. Hold it just 
Same way we made the other left side highlights, we just pull straight down. Oh, that's way too much. There we go. You have too much. Check before you put it on the canvas, otherwise you might might get upset. There we go. Wipe that off. Wipe that off. Two and a half inch brush. I'm just blending out the bottom. There we go. And then back into the mountain color. Two and a half inch brush. And maybe a little bit more dark color. Red, blue, brown. There we go. We're just tapping. Nice little foothill. Pull up a little bit, make it look like little trees. Way down the mountain here. And then we'll have another one down here. Maybe some more blue. Can't tell if that's darker or not. But if it is, let me know. If not, also let me know. That and then he's just throwing it in down here. So I'm gonna pull up here again, make little trees. All right, take red, blue, brown. Almighty tree, just a gigantic tree right here. There we go, nice big old tree. We have those same colors. Tree, hill, little hill, mountain. I'm going to add, I just saw this, some white here. Just to make it stand out a little bit more. I feel like that color I was using wasn't, at least to me, it didn't stand out enough. shoreline with some of this and some yellow ochre. Should look like sand. Maybe a little bit, a little bit of brown. There we go. A little roll of paint. We're just making a sandbar back here. this knife, clean up this brush, I got a ton of paint in here, oh yeah, don't want that on the canvas yet, alright, I'm just wiping off this brush still, 
take this pull to the right just cleans up the water lines I think all right and he's extending these big trees so we'll go back into that dark color we just wiped off Van Dyke brown blue Prussian blue and a lizard and crimson and we're just pushing in some colors down here there we go Might add some more green. Can you see the, the flying branches? That is what I right here. could do. There we go. That's good. That's good. Much better. Much better. Nice. All right. Tree trunks. What are we using here? He's just using the palette knife up and down. One time I did it that way and I cut right through the canvas. Normally you don't have to worry about that, but sometimes it, it's an older canvas or maybe it looks like it might have been a little flimsy. It can happen. All right. Got some branches, we got some nice big trees here, mountain hill. I really am not a fan of this over here. Can't tell if that made it better or worse. Maybe it made it a little bit better. On the screen I can see it way better. There's a there's a white spot there, but when I look at it, I can't see it at all. All right, we're going to take this yellow. Big old puffy brush here. Just making our trees nice and green. Happy trees here. There we go. This brush has so much paint in it right now. look like grass here. There we go. That looks nice. Light side, dark side, some nice little puffy branches. Let's see if he puts some into the water. Maybe he won't. light green. There we go. I'm just tapping the corner and get some nice highlights there. out once we clean this brush off. It's amazing that you can do most of these paintings with just the two inch, two and a half inch brush. All 
All right, uh, clean the brush off. This one's gonna have a bunch of paint in it. That's okay. That's why we got all these paper towels. I'm using shop towels. I don't know if I had mentioned that. Just Scott brand shop towels. All right, we gotta we gotta get as much of this dark color off, otherwise it's gonna ruin the highlight that we that we pull down here. All right, here we go. Gentle, gentle. Very gentle. There you go. No more. We're done. I did one more. All right. Wipe this off. Wipe that off. There we go. And then get the a palette knife. The same sandy color. Green, yellow, brown. All those. Mix them up. Something could be nasty. It doesn't matter. Pull it out like that, and then go grab some more darker color. Back here, it should be a little bit darker. There we go. Should look like mud. That's what we're going for there. Wipe the palette knife off. Grab this two-inch brush again. I'm just going to pull to the left. There we go. And then I'll go back to this fan brush real quick and do one more little thing. Just right here. Just some light grass in between. Not too much, but a little bit. There we go. Just a little bit, not too much. Alright, we got our trees, mountain. What is he doing? Another island? Oh, yeah. So we're going to take these. Pretty much all the yellows and greens here. Right here. We're just pushing straight in, making some grass. Up. A dog paw and dark blue, it looks like. It's dark blue colors. And I just have dark, uh, dark blue is just, uh, I guess this is purple, so crimson, ultramarine, some brown, some green, phthalo green, just everything, literally every color. And then we're covering up everything that we didn't like about that mountain. Let's make them taller, just a little bit, not too tall. There we go, a little bit more. Press this in here, maybe one here. I feel like I gotta make it just a little bit darker. Can you see that? Yeah, I guess you can see that on the screen. We're going to throw in some branches here. Or not branches. Uh, these are, this looks like tree branches here, just in the middle. Just random. There we go. No more than that. And we need this guy clean. I should have two brushes, but I used them for uh, regular oil paints a little bit ago, so I couldn't couldn't do it. All right, gotta get the dark color out. I'm just using a shop towel again. Then add some white color in there. White. Some white and gold. There we go. Something like that. There 
There we go. I'll go back in this color. I don't know what color that was, but I'm gonna use it anyway. Go back into the dark color. Just throw in some spots of darker colors. There we go. Just bring everything together. Something like that. Alright, I don't even know what color this is. Oh man, he already added in some bushes down there. Just throw in some bright things here. Alright, there we go. And then this. What did he do at the end here? He just went. <laughs> I don't know if I could do this. <laughs> Alright, this is fun. <laughs> it's just. He called them bull rushes, but. If you've never done this before, I don't know how to explain how to do it well. Pretty sure I just flung paint somewhere. <laughs> He's still going. Here we go. Something like that. <laughs> go back to this brush that I was using. Just add in some. This is just grass. pull up with the fan brush it makes it look kind of like wispy grass <laughs> it's crazy i've never done that with the uh, knife before <laughs> pellet knife that was fun thanks bill for an excellent excellent technique there <laughs> all right i'm going to pause that there video and I think, yep, that's the alarm telling me it's it's been an hour. Well, I'll take this down. I can check. Oh, I gotta sign it. I gotta sign it first. Getting ahead of myself. All right. Some linseed oil in the bright red. Shake back and forth. Go back up here. Just drop it in, nice and small. Some people like big signatures. I like mine kind of small now. Date two two. There we go. Rinse this brush out here. And then we'll bring it down and wrap things up. Alright. So it was nice having Hamletty in the in the chat. Just hanging out. Uh, if anybody else is in there. Thank you for joining as well. Alright, let's see how we did. This is uh Bill Alexander painting. I think it's called Autumn Mountain. So there we go. And with that, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thanks for joining. I'll have these up as videos for folks who didn't or weren't able to tune in. And yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>